Hi everybody, this is Miss Snook, your science teacher, and today I'm going to be demonstrating what you're supposed to do for the Ocean Density Lab. What you see in front of me are three clear containers that I have labeled one, two, and three, and I just made a little piece of paper so I could keep them straight. I have some salt, I have a spoon, I have two thermometers that are rubber banded together and both of the red bulbs on the back are submerged in the water. And I pre-made some colored ice cubes. I used green because that's all I had in my house. It doesn't matter what color you use except make sure it's dark so that you can see what's going to happen in the lab. Now the first container of water you're going to keep just fresh water. The second container you're going to add a couple of tablespoons of salt to make a salt water mixture. And the next container you're going to use a lot of salt. You want so much salt in this next container that it doesn't all dissolve. So there should be there should be some on the bottom of the container when you're done stirring. little bit more it helps if your water is not too warm okay that's pretty good you can already see that there's a difference in colors between the three sets of water this is just fresh water this is salt E water and this is a saturated salt solution. Saturated means that it cannot take any more of the salt. It's not dissolving any more in the water and so it's called saturated. Alright, now I have two thermometers that are rubber banded together in my super salty solution. I'm going to do, I'm going to work a little backwards in the lab and work three, two, one because it'll be easier for me to take some temperature readings because of how quickly the temperature is going to change. What you're looking at here in this lab, you're going to have to make a hypothesis about what you think is going to happen to the ice cubes when you put them in each one of these solutions. You need to think about that we've added salt to these two solutions, so the density of this water is going to be a little bit more dense than this water. The ice is going to float in all three of these solutions because ice is less iced frozen water is less dense than liquid water. And but you need to think what what's going to happen with the temperature of the water as we um, increase density here. So this is an increased density, middle density, low density. Uh, we're going to be adding the food colored ice into here, and you need your containers to be clear so that you can see what's going to happen. Remember when we're in science class, we want to be using the Celsius degree marker on our thermometer, not the Fahrenheit marker. And the Celsius degree marker right now reads for the top of the water at about 26 degrees Celsius. The little tick marks are in units of two. And the bottom of the water also reads about, actually the bottom of the water reads 22, let me see. Oh no, I'm sorry, I was upside down. So they both read 22. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a colored ice cube and I'm going to put it into my super saturated solution and we're going to watch what happens. So you're supposed to make observations and there is a chart to fill out in your lab report. 
So as I'm watching this, I notice that the color is diffusing out of the ice cube. Um, pay attention to where the color is darkest in the cup and where it's lightest. Which direction is it going? <clears throat> Does cold water float on warm water? Or does warm water float on cold water? These are questions you need to be thinking about and asking yourself as you perform this lab. The other thing you need to think about is pretend that the water in the cup is ocean water and the ice cube we've placed in the cup is an iceberg or a piece of glacier that has broken off of um, the land and is now in the water and think about why do icebergs float and what about the temperature differences between the ocean water that's salty and the iceberg that's floating on it. And if you remember liquid water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. Here is zero degrees Celsius on my temperature scale and we are going to check and see if there's a temperature difference between the top of the water and the bottom of the water. And you need to follow the directions in the lab. It tells you at what time intervals you need to do that at. So you might be doing it at one minute, three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. So it's been about a minute since I've put this in here. I'm just going to quickly check the temperature it's still at 22 on the bottom of the water. It's still at 22 on the top of the water. And I'm going to continue this lab um, just briefly to show you how what you're supposed to be doing. But pay attention to the directions in the lab and what time frame you're supposed to be measuring your temperatures at. Also, don't keep your thermometers out of the water for a very long period of time because then they'll get adjusted to the air temperature and you don't want that to happen. It's okay to just do this um, one at a time so that you can get accurate uh, temperature readings. If you happen to have more than two thermometers in your lab kit, feel free to do two at a time. And I recommend you do the saltiest water and the middle salty water first before you do the fresh water. All right, so I'm going to place another colored ice cube in my middle salty water. We're not going to take a temperature reading, but I just want to demonstrate to you what you should be seeing. And you want to pay attention to the, make those observations about how fast is that color diffusing. Remember the color is cold because it's um, frozen. Where is the cold water going? In the cups. So um, look at uh, let me get a white piece of paper so that we can see this a little clearer. All right, so here's our first one. Look at where the cold water is. It's kind of towards the top of the glass. You look at this one, where did the cold water go? And if you look at this one, it's very clear where the cold water went. Pay attention to how fast it takes for your ice cube to melt. Make sure you're writing down all of these observations so that when it comes time to fill out your chart for your lab report, you have all of the information that you need. I'm just going to take one more temperature reading to see if we have any difference yet. It's moving down to about 21 degrees on both the top and the bottom of the water. And like I said, you want to make sure you get those temperature readings for one glass, move on to your next glass, and then your third glass. And it's okay if you do this out of order. So that's about it for this lab. See you in class.